In this video, we're going to take a look at for loops, also known as iterables, uh, because of the fact that for loops are going to iterate something or repeat something a certain number of times. So um, for loops are, are, uh, are useful when you want to do something or repeat something a known number of times. There are other loops, uh, such as the while loop, which will uh, do something until some, some event happens. But a for loop has a finite uh, end time, so to speak. So uh, sometimes uh, there are this one situation where this is useful is where uh, a new value, perhaps inside of a vector, depends on the use of a previous value. So for example, if, uh, one situation or one common use of this is a recursive process where the next iteration sort of depends on a previous one. So let me give you an example. Suppose that what we're trying to, what we want to do is uh, look at the balance of a bank account over time. And each month I earn 1% of my balance and then deposit $100. I start with a thousand dollar balance. But I want to kind of keep track of my balance over the course of months. Um, without the uh, prior knowledge of what kind of mathematical formula I could use, the uh, probably the first thing that I'd want to try would be to see if I could uh, iterate through this. So what I'll do is I'll kind of start here at the month, and the month might be, um, you know, in this case, say. Uh, we're going to look at month versus the balance. Okay, so I know that at month zero, I have a thousand dollar balance. So there I have a thousand dollars. And at month one, what I'm going to have is the thousand uh, dollars plus one percent that I earned on the one thousand dollars plus my $100 deposit, which will come out to, let's see, uh, it's 1,010 plus 100 will give me, uh, will give me, let's see, uh, 1,110. Okay, so coming into month two, I'm going to have my 1,110, and uh, really I can multiply that by 1.01, 1 .01, so I don't have to add the 1,000 back to it. And then I'm going to add my $100 to that particular balance. And so as you can see, the, uh, in order to know what this value is going to be right here, that came from the previous month, right? And so this new balance will, whatever I get here, uh, coming into month three, I'm going to have to take that number and multiply it by 1.01 1 .01 and add my 100. And then I'm going to get some number. And month four, I'm going to take that number and multiply it by 1.01 .01 and add 100. And you can see that this is an iterative process. This requires me to know the previous step in order to gain knowledge of the next step. Okay, so that's a, a, a valuable, valuable technique to compute all this as a for loop because it will, it will quickly, as a computer uh, often does, it will quickly be able to iterate through this. So here's an example of, of kind of how we structure a for loop. So we state something like for i equals, so i is an index, and we want the index to start at 1 and to end at some number. In this case, I'm just choosing n. So notice how this structure how is very similar to creating a vector. Basically, i is going to be a vector of values from 1 to 10, except this loop will say, you know, you're, you're going to start at 1, you're going to do something, so first of all, this will start at i equals 1. It will do the something here. It will reach the end statement, and then it will bounce back up, and it will increment this from a 1 to a 2. So now i will become 2. It will do that same something. Uh, it will loop back to the top, and we'll get i equals 3. It will do that something. It will loop back to the top. It will do that something, and it will do this until we reach an i value of 10. That's its final run, and then the loop terminates. So let's see a particular example where what do we what do we have in place of do something? Well, let's just start off with a really basic example. Here, I'm going to basically start at an index of one, work my way up to ten. And a cool thing you can do, a really useful thing, is just to see what your code is running, is to have it a print statement in there. And in this case, all I want to do is I want to report the value, the current value of i. So I 
have this text in here. The value of i is uh, colon, and then um, the colon is just there for, for visual purposes. And then I'm going to report the value uh, rounded to an integer. And then I want a line break. Otherwise, if I don't do a line break, it's going to uh, report just a big mess of stuff. And then uh, the value that I want it to display is the value of i. And then I want to end the loop. So basically, what I should see is that this will start at i equals 1. And it will run through the print. So it sees the fprint statement. It says, oh, OK, the value, uh, you know, the val it'll, it'll print the value of i is, and it should print 1, because that's the first value of i. i is equal to 1. Then when i becomes 2, uh, it'll print the current value of i is 2, and so on. It'll keep repeating itself until it reaches an i value of 10. So let's execute this in octave. Loops are definitely one of those things that you want to run in a script. So I've just created a script here called testing.m for just uh, these purposes. You can type it in uh, to the command prompt. It's going to be very messy. Uh, because uh, just just trust me. So for i equals 1 to 10, and then notice it automatically increments the line, just like it does with an if, elif, else statement. And then I want f print f, and I want the value of i is colon, and then the placeholder for the number that I want to report. Um, and then I want to break the line break. And then I need to type in what I want to print. I want to print the current value of i. And then I'm going to type end, and it increments that as well. I'm going to save it. I'm going to run it. And notice that it does exactly that. The value of i is 1. Then it runs back up to the top, runs the uh, increments i to become 2, and then runs this print statement. So the current value of i is 2. So it prints the line. The value of i is 2. And it does that until we reach 10. If I change this value, of course, you know, to 20, it's just going to do the same thing, but it's going to do it 20 times. And if I change this to a thousand, uh, well, it's not going to look pretty, but it's going to basically, you know, print all those values from i equals one all the way up to a thousand. So you can see that that's that's not the efficient, most efficient way to do this particular process, but it is something that you can do with it. Let's take a look at another example. Um, another thing I can do is I can do functions on the index, meaning that I want to do something with the index value other than just report it. So in this case, I'm just picking, making up an example here. I'm creating a new variable called isq, which to me stands for i squared. And what I want it to do is when it iterates, it becomes i equals 1. I want to store in the variable called isq the square of i at, and one, added, added to 1. I put a semicolon here because I don't want it to report isq each time. So a semicolon, remember, suppresses the output. I, otherwise, I'm going to have a whole mess of stuff appearing. The semicolon prevents the current value of isq to appear. And then what I'm going to say is fprintf, and then I'm going to put quotes, and then I'm just going to put the first value, comma, another value, line break. And the first value I want it to report is the current index value. And then I want it to report isq, which is i squared plus 1. Okay, so I'm going to jump back over. And so all I'm going to do here is I'm going to type in isq equals i squared plus 1. Remember, that's just our index. Um, put this put semicolon there. I'll show you what happens if you don't. And now I'm going to replace this with whatever I want. But in this case, I'm just going to keep it simple and just report a value, comma, another value. So I'm putting in my placeholders. I want both to be integers. I'm going to put a line break. Close the quotes. I and then ISQ. And now I'm going to have it run. I'm going to save it first, have it run. Uh, whoops, I don't want it to run that long. I'm going to change my index back to 10. And there we go. So notice that it's typing exact, printing exactly what we want. When in the index was 1, 1 squared plus 1 is 2, so it reported 1 comma 2. When, then when it iterated back around, it, changed, it incremented i to become 2. So now 2 squared plus 1 is 4 plus 1 is 5. And then it uh, printed that. And then it looped back up, incremented i to 3. And now 3 squared plus 1 is 10. And it kept doing this until it reached its final index value of 10. And now it did 10 squared plus 1 is 101, printed that. 
And now, because it ran out of index values, it terminated the loop. Again, I could do this for a different index. It's, as you imagine, just going to get messier, uh, provided that I have more values in there. Now, again, if I, if I omitted this right here, uh, the semicolon, here's what happens. Very, very messy, right? Let me change this back to 10. Very messy because not only is it reporting the print line, but it's also reporting the current ISQ value. So ISQ equals 2, then it prints 1, 2. ISQ equals 5, then it prints 2, 5. So I want to suppress that so it doesn't print unnecessary stuff because I'm already printing it here. I just, I'm choosing how I want it to appear with this line. Uh, so I click run. Also, if I forget the, the slash n in there, it creates kind of a mess. It doesn't create new lines. So bleh, it just sort of reports everything in one line without breaking to the next line. Do a uh, slash n there. And I run that again. Okay. Another thing I could do is I can keep track of old values like we talked about in the balance example. So um, what I'm going to do here is I am going to uh, keep track of a value. So I'm going to in initiate a value called the sum equals zero. Excuse me, let's actually take a look at our original problem, which was calculating the total balance. So I'm going to do a couple things here, and I'll explain why. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create sort of this track keeper that's going to keep track of the current, the most current balance. I'm going to set the current balance to uh, $1,000. Sorry, there's a thousand, and I'm going to do a semicolon because I don't want it to print because it's my starting balance. Um, the, I'm going to create this empty vector here, and this is just going to help me keep track of not only this will keep track of the current balance, but this will keep track of all the historical balances. So I want to keep track of all my balances over, let's say, in this case, the first 10 months. So this is the way you create an empty vector just with a square bracket, close square bracket, semicolon. Um, now I'm going to run my loop. So I'm going to go from basically over the first 10 months. And I'm going to say this. I'm going to say that, um, so this is my zero, my time zero balance. So my val vec, so my vector, my balance vector at the current index, at the current month. So at, when i is 1, this will create, in the balance vector at position 1, it will take the, the balance value right now, multiply it by 1.01, add 100 to it, store that inside of the first position of this vector. So basically what this is going to do is it's going to take my uh, my vector and it is, whoops, it is going to report, figure this out here, there we go, uh, it is going to take, it is going to take uh, basically the find store the balance one in there and that's going to put it in that position and then we're going to keep track of the balance at month two um, and month three and so on all the way up to month 10 we're going to create all those uh, values inside this vector now what i have to do is because this the current balvec position has the current balance in there i'm going to update my variable that's just a single number that keeps track of the most recent balance so basically, because I've already computed the new balance and I've stored it in this index right here, um, I am going to assign that, uh, that current index value to my balance. So basically, that updates my balance to be the most recent balance. Now I'm going to print month, uh, the month, month whatever balance is, whatever the current balance is. So I represents the month number, balance is the current value of the balance. Okay, so let's see how this carries out. Whoops. So here I have it um, all typed in. I'm going to click Save, and I'm going to run this. Okay, so notice what it does. It reports month one balance is 1,110. Well, how did it get that? Well, it took my current balance, which was $1,000, multiplied it by 1.01, added 100 to it, it attained 1,110. Now, because the value of balance is 1,000, we need to update it because we want to keep track of the most recent balance, and we'll extract that from the current balance in the vector, valvec i. Uh, then we'll print it. Now we'll iterate back to the top. Now we'll say the balance vector in position 2 is going to equal the current balance, which is 1,110 times 1.01 plus 100. I can print the valvec, and you can see it up here. It's stored as a 1 by 10 vector, 
and these are just the balances over the first 10 months. 